Hello everyone. Welcome back to the series of lectures in nephrology. Till now we have learned about glomerular disorders, we have learned about AKI, we have learned about chronic kidney disease and electrolyte imbalances. So in today's session we will be starting off with a very interesting and very important um, topic which is your acid base balance and disorders of acid base. Okay. So let us start off this with your basic physiology of acid base balance in our body. So acid base status is basically dependent on acid base status is basically dependent on a very important molecule which is your hydrogen ion which is your hydrogen ion. So the normal hydrogen ion concentration is about 35 to 45 nanomoles per liter. The normal hydrogen ion concentration in our body is about 35 to 45 nanomoles per liter. But the hydrogen ion is usually measured in terms of the negative logarithm of the H plus ions. The negative logarithm of the H plus ions is what we call as the pH. So in our body, you don't you feel that our body has to be maintained in a neutral pH? The body has to be maintained in a neutral pH. So the pH is usually ranging from 7.35 to 7.45. So any excess of hydrogen ion, any excess of hydrogen ion is what we call as acidosis. Any excess of hydrogen ion is what we call as acidosis. So whenever the acid content in the body increases, then it has a lot of side effects, right? So the body's aim is to maintain this pH in a neutral pH which is from 7.35 to 7.45, right? So how does the body maintain this neutral pH? So this is brought about by what we call as your buffer systems. This is brought about by what we call as your buffer systems. The buffer systems are classified into three types. So we have the extracellular buffer systems, the respiratory buffer systems and the kidneys, okay? So the main aim of these buffer systems is that they act like a sponge. They act like a sponge. So whenever there is an excess amount of H plus or acidosis, then these buffer systems come and combine with it and they neutralize it so that the body maintains the pH between 7.35 and 7.45. So the most important extracellular buffer system is the presence of your bicarbonate ions. The most important extracellular buffer system is the presence of these bicarbonate ions. You have your intracellular buffer systems which includes the proteins and phosphate, which includes the proteins and your phosphate buffer system. This is a minor buffer. The most important is your bicarbonate buffer. Then you have a respiratory buffer system. So what is the function of this respiratory buffer system? The H plus ions combine with bicarbonate and form H2CO3, right? So the bicarbonate helps in neutralizing the H plus ions. The H2CO3 is then broken down into H2O and CO2, right? H2O and CO2. And this CO2 is where this CO2 is excreted from the lungs. So the respiratory buffer system involves the carbon dioxide excretion from the lungs. So we know that carbon dioxide is basically an acidic gas. So it is an acidic gas. So whenever there is excess of acid in the body, this has to be removed. This is buffered by the extracellular bicarbonate. It's broken down into carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is exhaled from the lungs. So this is about your respiratory buffer. Then in the kidney also, we have a buffer. So in the kidney also, we ensure that the pH is maintained between 7.35 and 7.45 and there is no over accumulation of your H plus ions which are acidic in nature. So the first thing that we have to understand here is that there are bicarbonate ions. These bicarbonate ions are reabsorbed from the kidney. They are reabsorbed from the kidney. So this is your first way in which the kidney forms the buffer. The second one is that in the distal convoluted tubule, you have secretion of H plus. So whenever the H plus is increased, there is increased secretion of H plus in the distal convoluted tubule. So in the distal convoluted tubule, the H plus combines with ammonium, which is there in the urine and it forms ammonium ions. So the H plus combines with ammonia, which is there in the urine and forms ammonium ions and it is excreted. Similarly, it also combines with HPO4 to form H2PO4 and it is excreted, right? So this is about the way in which kidney acts as a buffer system. So what have we discussed till now? We have discussed 
what is acidosis we have discussed what is the aim of the body how to maintain a neutral ph we have understood what are buffer systems so buffer systems are basically sponges which prevent excessive accumulation of your h plus ion which can result in acidosis so this can be an extracellular intracellular respiratory and your renal buffer systems so the most important is your bicarbonate secondly we have how the carbon dioxide gas is excreted from the lungs thirdly we have your ammonium buffers and how the h plus is secreted in the dct and removed as your ammonium ions now let us understand this formula which is your henderson hasselbalch formula so this is involving a lot of basic chemistry which is not important now what we have to understand is that the ph is given by a formula which is given as pka which is constant plus logarithm of bicarbonate by 0.003 into pco2 levels in other words ph is proportionate to the logarithm of bicarbonate by pco2 that means that the ph which basically reflects the acid base status in our body is dependent upon the bicarbonate levels and the pco2 levels so this is a very basic concept that you have to understand this basically means that the ph is dependent upon the bicarbonate levels as well as the pco2 levels okay now let us understand what are all the primary acid base disorders so in this diagram can you understand that this is your ph the aim of the body is to maintain the ph from 7.35 to 7.45 the aim of the body is to maintain the ph between 7.35 and 7.45 so if the ph decreases so can you see in this arrow if this ph is decreasing below 7.35 then this is called as acidosis and if the ph is increasing ph is increasing then it is called as alkalosis okay so any decrease in the ph below 7.35 is acidosis any increase in the ph above 7.45 is alkalosis now acidosis can be classified as metabolic acidosis and respiratory acidosis and alkalosis is your metabolic and respiratory alkalosis so what is the primary problem here so in metabolic acidosis there is acidosis so what will be the ph the ph will be low the primary problem here what we term as metabolic is that the bicarbonate levels are also decreased now if the ph is decreased and the bicarb levels are also decreased then this is a primary metabolic disorder this is a primary metabolic disorder now you having a primary metabolic disorder then your buffer systems have to come into action right your buffer systems have to come into action so the other thing that you will have to note is your pco2 now i have told you that pco2 is an acidic gas it is an acidic gas so if the ph is reduced bicarbonate is reduced in what state is the body in the body is in a metabolic acidosis so the compensation will be brought about by your respiratory compensation compensation has to be brought about by your respiratory system and that is why we look at pco2 now pco2 is an acidic gas so will you have accumulation of pco2 will you have accumulation of pco2 or you will have removal you will have removal so pco more pco2 will be removed from the body so if more carbon dioxide is exhaled from the body what happens to the pco2 levels in the body it will reduce because it is exhaled it is exhaled so we have understood what is your primary metabolic acidosis so the primary metabolic acidosis means that there is accumulation of h plus ions or there is a decrease in bicarbonate and the ph is reduced so what will be the compensation the compensation has to be a respiratory compensation now since carbon dioxide is an acidic gas that has to be removed or that has to be exhaled so what happens to the pco2 levels in the body that also will be reduced okay now what is respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis means again what happens to the ph ph will be reduced now as the name suggests it's a primary respiratory problem so the problem will be with the pco2 PCO2 is an acidic gas so what will be the PCO2 levels here PCO2 levels will be high so if there is accumulation of PCO2 if there is hypoventilation and carbon dioxide is not being removed then the pH decreases and there is a primary respiratory acidosis if there is a primary respiratory problem then what should the compensation be 
the compensation will be at the kidneys or a metabolic compensation so bicarbonate is basic bicarbonate is basic so if there is acidosis what should happen to the bicarbonate the bicarbonate should start increasing or accumulating so the kidney tries to preserve more and more bicarbonate because of the acidosis okay so this is how you differentiate if this is a metabolic acidosis or a respiratory acidosis so if you can see here if you can see here the ph and bicarb are in the same direction right they both are going downwards in the same direction then it is a metabolic problem if the ph and the bicarb are in the opposite directions in the opposite directions then this is a respiratory issue this is a way to remember it but the understanding we have already got now let us understand metabolic alkalosis right so alkalosis means what ph is on the higher side more than 7.45 the name metabolic means that the bicarbonate which is basic increases right so there is retention of bicarbonate now if you are having a metabolic problem how will the compensation be compensation has to be respiratory now will you have accumulation of carbon dioxide or will you have more exhalation so the body is becoming alkalotic then you will have to accumulate a neutralizing gas which is your pco2 that means there will be decreased exhalation it will not be exhaled and the pco2 levels will also increase in response to this metabolic alkalosis all right clear till here now let us understand what is respiratory alkalosis so here the primary problem is with your respiratory system there is alkalosis which means ph is increased then what happens to the pco2 it's a primary respiratory problem pco2 is acidic that means the levels of pco2 in the body are decreased the levels of pco2 in the body is decreased so what will be the compensation there will be a renal compensation now the body is already alkalotic so what should happen to the bicarbonate levels in the body so that should also decrease so we have understood what is acidosis alkalosis we have understood metabolic acidosis respiratory acidosis in metabolic alkalosis the ph is increased and bicarb is increased because it's a metabolic problem now since the body is alkalotic the compensation has to be respiratory you will not exhale the excess carbon dioxide you will accumulate the carbon dioxide because it's an acidic gas so the levels of pco2 is also increased in the body in a primary respiratory alkalosis the ph is increased it's a respiratory problem that means what there is low carbon dioxide in the body there is low carbon dioxide in the body right so in respiratory alkalosis what happens to the bicarbonate levels because the body is primarily alkalotic then the bicarbonate has to be excreted bicarbonate has to be excreted okay so the bicarbonate levels decrease the bicarbonate has to be excreted so this is about your primary acid base disorders and how the body buffers compensate to it fine now let us look at the normal ranges let us look at the normal ranges so the normal ph the normal ph is from 7.35 to 7.45 the bicarbonate levels normal is between 22 to 28 milliequivalents per liter the normal pco2 levels in the body is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury so these are golden values always remember the normal range always remember the normal range okay fine now let us understand certain formulas which are used in the acid base disturbances to identify the compensation now this basics we have already learned we are just going through that again so in a primary metabolic acidosis what happens to the ph the ph is low where is the primary problem it is with the bicarb so the bicarb is also low what happens to the paco2 carbon dioxide is an acidic gas so it has to be exhaled out there will be hyperventilation and the pco2 levels are also reduced so the ph and the bicarb and the pco2 are along the same direction all three are low now how do you find out whether the reduction in the carbon dioxide level is enough to compensate whether the bicarbonate fall so that is given by this prediction of compensation formula which is also called as the winters formula right so pco2 is given by this formula 1.5 into bicarb plus 8 plus or minus 2 1.5 into bicarb plus 8 plus or minus 
or PaCO2 is also given as the bicarb levels plus 15. In other words, what it means that the carbon dioxide will decrease by 1.25 millimeters of mercury per millimole change in bicarbonate. Okay, so that means that if the bicarbonate begins to fall, the PCO2 also has to proportionately fall to adequately compensate it. So the PCO2 will fall by 1.25 millimeters of mercury for every one mole fall in bicarbonate. And this is your Winter's formula which we have discussed. 1.5 into bicarb plus 8 plus or minus 2. In metabolic alkalosis, in metabolic alkalosis, what happens to the pH? pH is high. Why? Because there is excess of bicarbonate. So where will be the compensation? Compensation will be respiratory. So what should happen? The respiratory gas, which is PCO2, which is acidic, has, also has to accumulate because the body is becoming alkalotic. So that will also be high. So the PSCO2 will increase by 0.75 millimeters of mercury per millimole rise in bicarbonate. Or you just remember by this formula, 0.7 into bicarb plus 20 plus or minus 5. So the expected PaCO2, so PaCO2 is rising to compensate for the metabolic alkalosis. So this expected PaCO2 will be given by the formula 0.7 into bicarb plus 20 plus or minus 5. So in this range it has to be. If it is not, that means it is not adequately compensated. So we are just going through the formulas. We will be looking at certain clinical scenarios as well. Now, in respiratory alkalosis, in respiratory alkalosis, what happens? You can have acute or chronic, right? So alkalosis means the pH will be high. Since it's a respiratory problem, that means what? There is a low PCO2, right? So if there is alkalosis, how will the renals compensate? So they have to excrete the excess bicarbonate to bring it back to the normal, right? They will excrete the excess of the basic substance which is bicarbonate. So, you will have to remember the numbers 2 and 4. For every 10 fall in the PCO2, for every 10 fall in the PCO2, the bicarbonate will decrease by 2 and in chronic it will reduce by 4. This is given as 0.2 and 0.4 but you remember the numbers 2 and 4. So, for every 10 millimeters of mercury fall, in the PaCO2, in your respiratory alkalosis, for every 10 millimeter fall in your PaCO2, the bicarb levels will decrease by 2 or 4 depending on whether this is a acute respiratory alkalosis or a chronic. Then what about your respiratory acidosis? What about your respiratory acidosis? So here there is an acidotic process. So the pH is low. We have already discussed that. What is the basic problem? The problem is a respiratory problem. So the PCO2 is high. What will compensate? The renals will compensate by accumulating bicarbonate. So the bicarbonate levels are also going to increase. Here you remember the numbers 1 and 4. So in your respiratory alkalosis, you remember the numbers 2 and 4. In your respiratory acidosis, you remember 1 and 4. So for every 10 millimeters increase, for every 10 millimeters increase in your PaCO2, the bicarb will increase by 1. For every 10 millimeter increase in your PaCO2, the bicarb will increase by 1. Similarly, in chronic, for every 10 millimeters of mercury rise in the PaCO2, the bicarb will increase by 4. Okay. So, this is about your various compensation formulas. Fine. So, with this we have come to, so with this we have come to the end on your basics of acid-base physiology and the various compensatory mechanisms. In the coming classes, we will be learning about each of these acid-base disturbances more in detail. Thank you.